to talk about the entertainment industry in depth and I want to talk about the truth. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors that go on in, in this field and, you know, I just want to talk to people that are in the same industry that can shed some light on certain topics that maybe we resonate with you. Songwriter Samantha Sharp. Hello. <laughs> well, the floor is you. So, so mm. tell us a little bit about you know what you do, um, you know the field, and just yeah, how how things have affected you at the moment. Hi. Yeah. So, um, as you said, I'm singer songwriter. Started off just singing. Um, took a really long break from it actually. Um, before I met Steph, it ended up being kind of fated I guess that I ended up with her as my teacher um because it got me back into doing what I actually love yeah um and then yeah after finishing up lessons with Steph um I've released an EP I I was gigging around quite a bit and at the moment with the whole virus situation I currently am stuck at home um unable to actually get out and play for people so that's really been quite tough um especially you know artists were all really emotional people and um a lot of you know music is livelihood um yeah it, it's 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 uncharted territory for everyone so there's no real right or wrong way um to deal with any of it if if people are writing music that's great if they're not that's fine too because we all feel different What's the process been like for you? I've been finding that I I can get into practice quite easily. Um, there's not much else to sort of do, but emotionally I don't feel 100% comfortable with writing new things at the moment and actually putting them out there. Um, I want to. I know I want to have something ready for when this is all over, but yeah. it's just about whether or not it's going to be the right thing. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess because we, we don't actually know what life looks like on the other side. Like, is the industry yeah. going to be the same? Because Sam Smith is on his couch as well at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, um, we're kind of in the same ballpark at the moment. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, all, all artists are, you know, having the same struggle, basically. Um, so, yeah, it, it, we don't know when it's going to and we don't know whether things are going to get back to normal. I saw someone say um, that, you know, with, without a vaccine, it could be another year before they actually allow live shows like concerts and festivals again. Yeah. Well, you know, the music industry is really, really interesting because, um, look, through any crisis, music has always gone through. What does it, I mean, what do you think this is going to actually look like? moving forward I mean is this going to be like it was before or do you see the music industry changing and do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing I know as you said like music perseveres music is what people cling to a lot of um a lot of music through you know wartime stuff like that yes that, that really resonated with people it gave them hope and mm. I think that with the saturation of the market at the moment as well because so many people are online looking for something to do yeah and putting music out there as well um it it could definitely change you know the the climate for for labels for all of that stuff whether or not they're going to put out stuff more often or less often or what's mm. going to happen it's just all over the place what was the music industry like beforehand? Look, for me, the pro has always been about artistic expression and that people can actually do what they want to do with their own thing. Um, yeah. I, I hear a lot that if they were with a label, that kind of thing, it wouldn't be the case. Um, but with a lot of, um, you know, we've, we've moved to such a digital age that people can distribute independently. Um, that's what I did. 
yeah I um I got all my tracks done did all of that on my own time put it up and I've you know had no one have to tell me what to do basically so um it's been really good to have that um that freedom um that does mean that everyone has that freedom so there are about I think there were hundreds of thousands of songs put up every single day on Spotify. Mm -hmm. So it is really um, quite full up at the moment with every, everyone gets a chance, which is wonderful. We can all be heard, yeah. but again, that does make it quite noisy. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that things won't change too much, but there are some things that do need to change. Yeah. What, what are some of those things that you've experienced personally? Uh, I mean, the low sort of um, pay rates for these streaming things are pretty abysmal. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's It's been uh, like five, four or five months since I released an EP. And in that time, in CD sales, I've made quite a bit of money. But in streaming, I think I've made $6. Whoa, that's it? <laughs> can I ask you with what you uh, you know obviously so I'm, I'm guessing you you've been dreaming about being a musician since you were really little right yeah so what it's like to actually be a musician like what what's the expectation that you're fed with as a child and uh, what do you get? right it's very different from what we're told will will be the case um especially if you have been um you know in in any like talent shows or if you've watched any even um yeah. when yeah. when i was growing up that was the golden age of american idol yeah and kelly clarkson um yeah, yeah. and um from from the outside, yeah, it, as a child especially, because I remember I used to perform for my family on my patio because it's got a slightly raised bit. Yeah, so we're we're told that it's going to be like that all the time, though. That you know, because you when you sing for your parents at that age, they're your adoring fans. Yeah, and you think that you know it's going to be all bright lights and big cities and um you know having access to things all the time having a lot of money as well um, which is a very very common misconception I found about the music industry um, I often find myself saying that I didn't get into this for the money because if I did I wouldn't be in it yeah. um because yeah people see it like oh musicians especially those at a high level they um they have more money than they know what to do with that's why they're always dressed so fancy and all that but the truth is that, especially with the way that royalties are, it's actually not the case until you, until you reach sort of, you know, like Justin Bieber level. Mm. <laughs> it's actually a pretty low paying industry. <laughs> so yeah, like, you know, b between being a, a like a real working musician, just, you know, kind of doing the live scene and, and Justin Bieber, what is mm. the gap and how far is that gap? I'd say the gap is, it's, it's almost like they're the 1% in that case, the way that, you know, um, because I know that I, um, I tend to try and price things fairly um, mm -hmm. as a, cause I'm an independent musician. I get to sort of price things myself and yes. I try and be, be fair and be reasonable. Um, cause, cause I'm not that level, but at the same time, sometimes if I'm, I, I, I undercut myself because I want to to get more work or um, to make that business happy or something like that. So mm -hmm. the difference can be astronomical. It can be, you know, I'm getting a couple of hundred dollars a week or, you know, someone at that level could be getting a million dollars a week. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's unfathomable. I would say it's a, it's a really, really big gap. I feel like ever since this has happened, it's given us all a chance to really clear our head and figure out what we really want in life. Um, do you think now, coming into this, do you think that now you would never sort of undercut you? Like now you, you're realising your value more or do you feel like it's like which way is it going for you and what's your standpoint now, I guess, now and moving forward? I know that building myself up the way that I did and and 
playing for less allowed me to actually start gigging earlier. Yes. Um, and to to build up that skill and that rapport and that um, ability to play for people so that I could charge more. Mm -hmm. um, it gave me the experience. So I wouldn't say that I would never do it if I sort of was to do it all again. Um, yeah. I, I think that it was not the best thing to do, but it was warranted at the time. You mentioned about building yourself up. Now, mm -hmm. can, can we, uh, I want to sort of elaborate on that because I feel like you mean not just building yourself up musically, but building yourself up as a person. Mm -hmm. So definitely tell me a little bit about that and how much that's really contributed to um, where you are today as, uh, on a personal level. When I, when I started gigging, I didn't have the most confidence either. Yeah. Every single time that I would play, I was terrified that someone was going to notice that I wasn't that good. Like it was this whole imposter syndrome thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I saw a quote that was, if you have imposter syndrome, it probably means you're not an imposter because actual imposters don't think that they're imposters. Right. They think they belong where they are. So, um, I mean, from, from the first sort of time that I started singing with you even, I was terrified mm. I used to shake and I would my legs would shake so much I could barely stand up <laughs> and that hasn't happened to me for you know like three years or something now I've been able to build up this confidence in my own ability and in you know in the fact that people aren't paying that much attention to things like if your legs are shaking yeah <laughs> they don't notice yeah yeah. Listening for the heart and the soul of the music. Um, I actually learned to play guitar because I was going through mental health problems. Right. Yeah. So I was finding that I needed um, goals. I needed things that would keep me busy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I needed to feel like I had achieved something because at that point in um, where I was working and um, and what things were happening in my life, I felt like I was really out of control. Mm. So being able to set my mind to something um, actually gave me a lot of myself back. Um, and, and then just to continue from there, to know that I'm always getting better at it um, has really, really helped. And, and I got to, you know, write music because I was able to play. Um, I can sit and just play the same you know chord over and over and over and over again if I want to if I just need something you know like white noise um but it's been it's been really really good I think learning to play an instrument um I I couldn't play and sing at the same time and now I you know can pick up a song within a couple of minutes so it's um yeah it's definitely been one of the best things I've done to get me through you know life what are what other things I guess personally did you have to sort of go through as well to to feel comfortable within your own self that you only need needed your own validation instead of searching for that as a book so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know even just having like having bad shows or having um feedback on on things that wasn't the best you know um I've had some absolutely shocking gigs you know at the time you feel like you feel horrible you know mm -hmm. oh I've made a mistake uh, people are noticing but afterwards you're like oh well um you know I'm a person um it's really it's really easy these days especially with social media to see People who are, you know, maybe they're auto-tuned, maybe they've got a million filters on what they're doing, they've done 50 takes to get that perfect one. Um, yeah. Playing live is, is completely different, but also being yourself is completely different. And that's something that I really come to, to learn, especially through music, that usually the most raw and the most vulnerable artists are the ones that actually get through and get through to you as a person so I gave up on that I'm like I'll just do what I do I wanted to go back to a point where you said you, you were talking about this gig um and you said it was mm -hmm. a horrible gig and mm -hmm. you, you, you said these very strong words like oh well right 
<laughs> and I wanted to talk about the oh well, because what what is it that, you know, because I, I guess to somebody else that maybe has just started or isn't really immune to the to the fact that you have to be resilient in this field, right? That what gets you to the point of oh well? I, you know what, it's really interesting that you said that because when you said that, I remembered all the times that, you know, when I was first starting out, that it did feel like the end of the world. (laughs) Where I would come home from an open mic and I would be like, it went terribly, I'm not talking to anyone. (laughs) Or someone, uh, my mum would come with me and she'd take a video and I would refuse to look at it. It, it was like almost an attitude shift, I guess, where um, I was putting a lot of pressure on each and every performance to be perfect because that's, as I said, that's what people are shown more often, you know. Um, social media is a highlight reel, you know. People don't show you their bad stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It was like one day, especially when I was playing more often and – I think busking helped Mm. um, to have people just listen sort of as they pass by you and not be sitting there focusing because it feels like you're competing against each other. And like, we're not competing against each other. It's that's, it's another thing that I think we're taught young is that the industry is competitive. Therefore you must compete. Yeah. And you know, it's not necessary to compete because we're all different. Well, in all in all this, um, you know, seriously, you have worked really hard. What is the attitude that you must have if you want to go down this road? You've got to work hard, but not expect that your hard work is always going to mean a certain thing. I guess. Okay. Um, so, I got a lot out of releasing the EP. Yep. It it wasn't something that I expected, you know, I was going to meet certain people. It wasn't something like that. You have to just sort of do what makes you happy and do what, you know, feels right with the music. Work hard, get it done if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but you, you can't expect like, oh, well, a label's going to pick it up or yeah. um, I'm going to get signed, I'm going to get money like you've got to do it for yourself you've got to be resilient it's the oh well it's the it's 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 interesting that you said you know about hard work as well because I think my mindset as well is that I've always considered myself to not work that hard Mm -hmm. and I actually was reminded the other day where (laughs) my mom pretty much read me a list of things that I've done (laughs) because I was like oh yeah but you know, because I like what I do, it doesn't always feel like work. And there's always hustle and there's always practice to do or people to contact, networking, all that stuff. But that doesn't mean that it feels like the nine to five. Yeah. So I've always sort of considered that I don't do that much and I should do more. And I realized that that's not really true. It just doesn't feel like a lot because it's what makes me happy. You said, um, you have to be able to change with the times. Mm-hmm. So now we're, we're in a situation. So mm. what, what could you suggest? How do you, as somebody in the entertainment field, how do you change with these times? What do you do? Well, there are a lot of um, online sort of platforms that I know that people are using at the moment. Um, so I know a lot of people doing uh, live streams. Mm-hmm. There are um, digital sort of festivals going around as well where a lot of different artists are collaborating, which is amazing. But, yeah, it's, you just got to see what's out there, I guess. And, yeah, I mean, people are doing, like, um, digital tip jars, like using their PayPal accounts cool. and letting people just, like, pop some some coinage in there. Kind of. Yeah. If you've got, you know, $2, give it to your local artist because we're, we're running out of money. Where can we get your name on some mugs instead of advertising your dumb? SamanthaSharp.com, actually. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Apple Music. Where are we going to check that out? Yes. Uh, so I have um, the EP is called Gilded Cage. It is on Spotify. It is on iTunes. 
Deezer, YouTube. It's everywhere that I can put it. (laughs) (laughs) I was so excited. And finding more platforms as we go. Oh, yeah. It's going everywhere. Um, And and I do physical CDs as well, which are also on the website too. Um, Um, You know, know, all the best with everything. I'm sure we'll chat later down the track and see what more progression you've had as well. Mm. So it's just, it's all a, it's all a fabulous journey, not the destination, but definitely the journey. Definitely. I don't know what the destination is anymore, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it's heading somewhere. <laughs> it's heading somewhere. Um, what is, uh, there's a, the, uh, I'm so big on quotes. There's a quote for that too. It's like, we're going to get rid of the old map. We're going to break out a crisp new one. Thank you so much, Sam. It's been a, a massive pleasure and wish you all the best during this time. Thank you for all your insight and knowledge. Thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me ramble. Thank you.